So, hi everyone. Welcome to this week's master class. Very exciting stuff. We're gonna get started. Today's class is about finding direction. And what this means is finding directions for what composition to play. <clears throat> if, you have, if you have any questions, um, please leave them for the end, unless it's like a quick question about the current slide. But at the end, we'll have like 10 minutes for any review. We could go back and like discuss anything at all. So don't worry about that. Let's get started. Okay, finding direction. Basically, there are three influences in the game that will help you find a direction for a composition to play. So if you're struggling a lot, you're like, okay, I don't know what to play. Um, or like, oh, I'm hard forcing a composition or like, I don't know how to, I don't know like what, what team or what units to play, then this is the class for you. So we're going to look at items, augments, and how the lobby influences what you should play. Okay. Our first one's items. Okay. So starting items right away can influence you or give you some sort of direction of what to play. So as soon as you spawn in on one, one carousel, everyone's running around for items. This patch, I think almost everything is fine except for bow. But even bow is like okay. The problem with bow is if you just get too many bows, then you're in trouble. But if you don't get any bows, then you're also in trouble. So take that at your own discretion. But uh, items right off the start will influence your decision. So I made a little, I guess, carousel like a uh, uh, process here. So bow. Oh, that's pretty small. Let's make this a bit bigger. Bow. You're going to go to play Duelist, Sure Shots, or Recons. Tier is AP Flex because you want to make that blue buff. Shoujin is not very good. The only Shoujin user that you can carry with is basically uh, Talia. And Talia is not good. Or she's not great. She's good, but she's not great. So Tier will go for blue buff. Chain, Belt, Cloak, Glove is fine. You can flex, without, you can flex within any composition, neither both AP and AD. And then Rod is strictly mostly just for AP. So you could go into AP Flex if you have good recons. So Bow, Duelist, Tier, either like Zoli, LeBlanc, AP, AP Flex, and then Rod, you go into like recons, you go into Viego. And uh, this Rod item is actually really good at this patch, just in general, because you can now build a uh, Gunblade and it feels really good. Uh, so if you're playing an AD comp, AD composition, even like Duelist or like Sure Shots, and you get a rod most of the time you're like oh my god i don't know what to do with the rod okay on spark doesn't doesn't help me morello's on sejuani i guess but now you can make a hextech gunblade and it's actually really good so don't even worry about it if you get rods they are super good so that's like your starting item on stage two one you always want to try at least to make one full item of course there are exceptions but try to at least slam something some good slams are like sunfire last whisper gunblade infinity edge these are like uh, some of these are rather generic items where you can play anything. So like, for example, Sun Sunfire and Gunblade, you can play any composition, right? Well, Last Whisper, it's, it already points you into AD, which is good and bad. It's good because you already know like, okay, I'm going to play AD. Like I have a pretty good uh, direction. The bad part is you have to play AD. The, the second good part is there are a lot of really good AD comps that are playable this patch like Samira, like Sure Shots, you can play Duelist, you can play Belveth carry, so that's really good. And then IE is good too, but in, in a certain case, normally I like to only slam IE if I have extra glove for Last Whisper, and then I play AD from there. So always try to slam some item on 2-1, and you'll always want to slam an item that'll let you play around the other component. Because on 2-1, you're gonna have three item components. One of them, or mo most of the time, you will have three. Sometimes you get Gold Star, you only get like two, but you're always gonna have one from Carousel, and then you normally get two from the minions. So three on total, try to slam one, and then last one you play around. So I just added a couple uh, examples here. So like, most of the time, the, w the way it works, if like, if this is your board, it's not nothing to do with positioning or anything. But like, let's say you have a frontline unit and then a backline unit. Ideally, well, what's gonna happen, there's like two scenarios, or like, there are two scenarios that technically there are three, but the third one's not that good. You either have like a frontline item and then you, you try to make an offensive item, a backline item from carousel. So for example, like Sunfire, right? So Sunfire would go up on your fence on your tank and then you're playing around like the bow tier rod for your, your backline carry. Or like vice versa, you have a Lost Whisper. So like this example here, you have Lost Whisper on your, on your carry and then you have like Belt Chain Cloak trying to make a tank item for that Lost Whisper. So you want a pretty good uh, balance between frontline and backline. There are cases where you have like, let's say Sunfire and a belt. 
Well, then you could go for Sunfire Warmog, Sunfire Redemption, and that's even better because then it's like, oh, you're super buffing up the tank, and tanks are better early game than late game just for like winning rounds. Uh, and then you could also do two damage items, but then your front line is pretty weak, and without a front line, your damage can't output damage that easily. So, regardless, just try to make a slam on 2 1 and then play around your other component. Some bad slams. So, if you have any combinations of these, probably don't make it. And by probably, I mean it's not that great to make it. So, like Chalice Seeks, Zephyr Shroud. Chalice Seeks, they're good late game, but early game, the components can just go into something better. So, like Chalice, like goes into blue buff, the tier, and then Zeeks. The belt is always really good, and the sword is also really good. And then Zephyr and Shroud, they're just not good early game items because the value is not that good. Uh, early game rounds are quite long, so like five seconds of disabling one unit is not that big of a deal. And then Death Cap, the rods can go to something much better. It could go to Jewel Gauntlet, it could go into Gunblade, it could go into Ionic Spark. If you're playing Duelist, it can go into Locket. So uh, Death Cap just is not that great right now. So two on slams, just try to make at least something. Don't just sit on your items. General rule of thumb, try not to have like three item components sitting on your bench at a time. Always try to have like one to play around with. Uh, second part is tank itemization. So you might be thinking like, oh, uh, oh, like all tank items are the same, but actually there's like two different types. So unless you have like an actual direction, like try to keep it as general as possible. But if you want to do a bit more specific, then you could go into this this like this so this is the more specific line up here uh gargoyles dragon claw and bramble vest so these are for like front to back comps so what is this this is like set if you're playing set solo front line then obviously he's going to get hit so then you want to play or create items that like uh, are really good to, for defense and will help you stay alive a long time versus like tank slash fallen items that are more damage oriented so i'll say like these are more like tank oriented and these are like frontline slash damage frontline or like damage oriented so these are the two different types of like frontline items um there are required like tank items of course you need in every composition these are just the two types so like something like this i, I have a slide on the next page that will make this more clear but this will be like tank set and then if you have like a lot of front frontline units but not exactly just like frontline tanks so like if you're playing viego Viego has a ton of uh, frontline units because the Oxfors like you have Alistar in there, you have Viego, you have Talon, maybe you have Camille, Echo, they're all frontline melee units. Then Redemption, Sunfire Cape, and Ionic Spark are a lot better. And I'll explain that on this slide here. So let's take a look. As I mentioned, so like if you frontline set, then these items like the Dragon Claw, Bramble, Gargoyle, they get, they get value 100% because the entire enemy team is attacking him, right? And then you have like your backline here, they're doing damage. It works out very well. If you put like redemption, or okay, redemption's fine. If you put Sunfire Cape and Ionic Spark, it actually is not giving set that much tank stats apart from like the base components. So he's gonna die pretty fast. He will do more damage, but that's not the point of that, uh, of his function. You want him to stay alive. So this is like frontline tank itemization. While this one back down here, like Viego Comp, this is what I'm talking about the redemption Sunfire Spark. It's because not one person is taking all the damage at the same time. So for example, like we have our tank here, like right, Alistar. Let, let's say we put Bramble, Gargoyle, and uh, Dragon Claw on him. Well, because we have a lot of units in the front line, maybe he doesn't get hit first. Even if we put him on the outside, then maybe like these, these guys will die like very fast. And then it's just your tank left standing. So instead of putting like tank items that will really like defend that unit in general, uh, with with when you have a lot of frontline units, make items like Sunfire Cape and Ionic Spark. Even Redemption is good because it heals around you, rather than like Gargoyle Stone Plate, uh, Bramble Vest, that type of thing. Okay, uh, so general rule of thumb: uh, keep items as general as possible until you have established a feasible direction. So once again, coming back to here. So let's say you have I don't know like cloak cloak chain cloak okay well you already know that you're probably playing a solo frontline type of thing with like dragon's claw or gargoyle you won't really be looking to play this type of composition and then uh, i have a couple other points here so after crux that's when you want to try to like actually commit to a composition there are many times sometimes you have to you don't have a choice you have to like preserve a five streak or whatever but 
a lot of times before Krugs, you're like, oh, okay, I have my, my item components. You know what? I'm leaning towards AD. I've got my Sivir. I've got my whatever Draven. I'm going to slam in Last Whisper. I got frontline items. We're chilling. Then you slam your Last Whisper and then you go into Krugs and you get tier tier off Krugs. And it's like, okay, what do I do now? Happens to me all the time whenever I play Duelist. I have like already a locket. I have a, a Last Whisper and then I go to Krugs and I get tier tier. And then I'm like, oh, well, that's not good. Uh, so ideally, try to commit to composition after 2 7. So that is your Krug round, but sometimes you have to make items beforehand and then you just play around with what you got. <clears throat> okay, so that is how, how items can influence you into specific comps. Uh, the best part to take out of this is just here. So, of course, if you have 80 items, so quote unquote like bow, sword, then you go into 80 comps. If you have like tier, you have fraud, then go into AP comps. And then chain, belt, cloak, or sorry, yeah, chain, belt, cloak, and glove they could go into anything because the first three are tank items every composition needs tank items and then both ad and ap comps use glove so don't even worry about that and uh you can use whatever you want so that's how items will influence you uh next part of augments so augments have been around for a while now but there is a new function for them the hero augments and these heavily influence what you're going to play so your 2-1 hero augment is always random regardless of what you have there are two possible ways you could go about this. Number one, it can lock you into a comp automatically. So this is like if you're playing a reroll composition, there is like reroll Gangplank, there's reroll Ash. If you get this like reroll Lulu, then you're locked into a comp, you've taken it, and you already know what you're gonna do. So this is good and bad. Actually, it's not even that bad. It's pretty good uh, because then you know exactly what you're gonna play and your whole gameplay is set up for you. You're just pressing the reroll key with a smile. The next way you could look about it is just play tempo and then you drop the augment later so these will be not carry augments but uh, support augments so like get paid with gangplank or like safety first with galio soul eater with nasus and uh, then on um, maybe like stage four you drop it and then you just play like three or four cost units depending on what your team is <laughs> so that's how that's if you get a hero augment right off the bat uh, other than that regular augments feel free to take econ augments on 2-1 make money stage two hp is fake Okay, HP is not that fake, but economy is just more important. Or like, if you have the spot, you could play battle. You could use battle mage, knives edge. These automatically make uh, give you a direction on what to play. So you're gonna be playing. If you have battle mage, you're probably gonna be playing Viego, or like ox force Viego. If you have knives edge, you're probably playing duelist. And then emblems, augments that uh, give emblems will give you direction immediately as well. It's so like if you take laser corp emblem. Well, surprise, surprise, you're playing Laser Corp. If you take Duelist Emblem, oh, you're playing Duelist, whatever. Or like Prankster, then you're take, you're playing Jinx or Echo or Zoe. So Augments can give you a lot of direction as well. 2-1 uh, Hero Augments, they can either lock you in or you just take the best one, play around it, and then drop it later. Okay. Uh, so creating more direction through Augments. So we're going to talk a little bit more about Hero Augments here. So the way they work is they're influenced by active traits from the round prior to when the hero augment pops up so here are augments they come on three two four two or like i mentioned before two one but two one is random so we're just going to talk about three two and uh four two four two here so this means on three one if you have not had like the hero augment yet then that means three two you might we will probably get a hero augment i i've sent in the chat i guess the chat's been deleted but uh, there is a TFT augment probability chart which shows you, oh, if you get, if you get like, I don't know what it was, like silver, silver, hero is 100%, or it was like gold, gold, and then the next one, hero 100%, something like that. So, but regardless, if you haven't got hot, if you don't get a hero augment for 2-1, you're most likely going to get it on 3-2. So this means on 3-1, you want to tailor your board to what, <clears throat> to, so then your hero augment actually like applies. So for example, let's say you have these three items. Right, just from looking at this, you see this. Oh, okay, these are best in slot Kaisa. You can put this on like Ramus or Cho'Gath. You can play Recon like from here. That's what I would do. This means on three one, if you're just playing your strongest board, you have like Brawler Frontline. You're carrying maybe like I don't know, who who like 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 I guess Ezreal's fine. But let's say you have a I don't know a Vayne like holding this, or a Vayne's also fine. Sorry, bad example. Let's say you have like a Draven holding this. And then you have like brawler frontline and then the three two hero augment hits and because you have brawler in you get like riven augment you get jack's augment 
and then you're like, oh, I don't want this, and then you reroll. And once you reroll your hero augments, your second like uh, set of them, one of them will be random. So maybe you get like, I don't know, like uh, like a Ramus one, which I guess is fine. Or like you get a Volcaus one, and then it's like, oh, it's doomed. So what you do is on 3-1, you make sure that you don't have any active traits that you don't want on your board. So for example, you take away Brawler, you take away Defender, you just play Recons, and then like Threats. Because Threats don't influence your... Uh, Threats do not influence your hero augment. So this is what tailoring your uh, uh, tailoring your your traits for your hero augment is. And then the difference for 4-2 is 4-2, you're so far into the game, you most likely already have your composition created, your board's already made. So whatever the 4-2 hero augment is, taking from your current from your traits from the round before, you're probably gonna play. So if you're playing like Sure Shot Samira on 4-2, you're probably gonna have Sure Shots and like Aegis Frontline. That's fine. Whatever, you probably get a like Senna or like Samir Augment, something like that. So don't worry too much about 4 2. It's mainly this 3 2 1 that is a big deal. Okay, so that is how Augments can now influence your composition. Uh, the last one here is Lobby. So Lobby is pretty important. Uh, every game of TFT is different. Some of them are similar, but regardless, there are going to be different units, items, Augments within the Lobby, not just from yourself, but from every player in the game. So if there, if this particular lobby you're playing in has a lot of AD teams, so you're against Duelist, you're against Sure Shots, you're against, I don't know, Draven Reroll, then you want to prioritize Defenders slash Ramus over Aegis. And then vice versa, if you're playing in an AP lobby, people are playing Spellslingers, they're playing Recons, they're playing, <coughs> they're playing LeBlanc Zoe, then opposite, you want Aegis and Cho'Gath instead of Defenders. So look at your lobby, see what people are playing, and this will give you a better idea of exactly like what you want to do with your own team to try to counter them. So don't don't just stick with the same thing every every game because you saw on some guide uh, a lot of like very new players straight into the game they just search up like a guide of like oh best best TFT compositions and that's fine to get an idea of like okay what what can I play like what do the end game boards look like but if you play that like every single game without any like flexibility then that's not ideal. You want to like cater your board. Uh, based on the lobby and I'll just explain this real quick so Ramus uh, he reduces AD for whoever he hits and uh, he knocks up in a little area so against like AD units this is really important uh, CCing them always good and then the reduction in AD Cho'Gath uh, against like spell spell slingers or spell users anyone that like does ability damage with their ability they don't care so much about the AD instead he mana reeves so being able to delay any cast is more important. So that's why Cho'Gath is good against like AP comps and Ramus is really good into AD comps. Okay, uh, we're almost at the end here. I think I have one more slide. Okay, contested. I, I see a lot of this. People will say like, oh, Max, I'm always contested. I can't hit my units. Life sucks. Okay, well, sometimes I'm lucky. But uh, if a lot of people are contesting the same composition then it might not be the best idea and by that i mean it's not a good idea to also contest it because you're going to just hold hands like six seven eight and uh, that's not that great but the exception is if you are in the best spot for a comp and you're contested just play it anyway if it's a, a reball comp position which is most of the time like the biggest like uh, deal because if you're just playing regular compositions people are just playing two stars then taking three out of the pool is not a big deal uh, but if it is reroll, so like you're playing, this used to be a big deal with Jax, like Jax reroll, but now it's more like Kai'Sa, and you're in the best spot for it to play anyway, just two star units and then to push levels. And then once they die, then you got all you got all the units back and then you could go from there. So the example I've given here, let's say we, we have a ton of these items, we have bow, we have swords, we're looking to play AD of course, but we're not sure which AD. We're looking for duelists, but then you, you scout around, there are already two other players that have duelist augments, let's say like the Yasuo augment or the Fuhrer augment, and you're like, oh, okay, this is not great. Maybe you just take Endless Pizza instead and you swap over to Belveth and Sure Shots. So don't contest if you, uh, don't contest if you don't have to, but if you are in the best spot for it, then play it. Just keep the two-star version and then push levels from there. Okay, so uh, today has been a 20 minute class, so not too much, pretty important stuff. We talked about items, augments, and hobby. If there's anything to take away from this class, it is these four. Number one, keep items as general, general as possible 
until you actually have some sort of direction. Uh, this can be from either your augments, your newly received items. So like what I mean is like after Krugs, you got, you got your items after Krugs, you figured out, oh, okay, this is AP or like you, you figured out it's like, okay, this is 80, 80 game or just through units. Uh, units is the least, um, <clears throat> units here is, is the least, like, like it's the least influencing because if you think about it, uh, augments are, you can't manually choose. So that's, that's like luck. Items is also, apart from carousel, not manually chosen, so that's also luck. But units, to some degree, you can force. Because you go to that specific level, you roll for it, and then you get it. So units not that big of a deal, but based off your augments and received items, then uh, these will give you direction. But until then, keep your items as general as possible, so then you can play flexibly based on what you get. Number two, make sure to tailor your upcoming hero augment the round prior to the actual hero augment. So this is going to be mostly on 3-1. So make sure that if your first augment chosen was not a hero augment, uh, keep make, make sure you think about it. Okay, 3-2, hero augment might pop up. Uh, what am I going to play? Do I really want Jax augments? Do I really want Riven augments? Do I want Kai'Sa augments? Do I want Vayne augments? And uh, think about it from there. Number three, uh, don't play contested compositions unless you're in the best spot to contest. So I think that one's pretty obvious. Uh, best spot means like, oh, if you have the augment or if you have the items necessary or if you already have the units. So if you're in the best spot, other people are contesting you, then do it anyway. You will most likely prevail, but don't reroll from there. Just get the two star units and then push levels. Last but not least, this is my favorite one. I like this one. If your items are doomed, sometimes this happens. Just slam it and play for the highest placement. A sixth, if your items are completely doomed and you go sixth place, you have a smile on your face. The worst thing to do is if your items are doomed, let's say you're playing AD, that example, right? So you're playing AD and then you go into like wolves and then you get tier tier. Uh, the worst thing to do is just like hold on to it and die. <laughs> so if your items are, do are doomed, slam suboptimal items and then play for your highest placement from there. And then uh, you'll be you'll be fine. Okay, so that's everything for today's class. Uh, we now have uh, well, technically as much time as you would like for Q&A, we can go through